the biggest news to come out of Russia was the story of the year, perhaps of our generation. Not one, but two artificial moons circled the Earth. Their radio beep signaling not merely a red scientific triumph, but the launching of mankind into a new era, the dawn of the age of space. Sputnik and Mutnik they were called, or in the second rode a dog, Laika, the first earthly life to travel in outer space, to prove that life can survive in the vast reaches of the universe. Instruments was the vital first stage in the long-range exploration of space. A giant rocket, man's greatest technical achievement, only a crude prototype of the true spaceship of the future. This first voyage into the void, so carefully charted, where a mistiming of seconds or a speed error of but a few miles an hour would mean failure, is as significant a venture as that of the ancient mariners who first sailed onto unknown seas. In the year 1957, man reached beyond the surface confines of his own planet for the first time in all history. And the bleep bleeps of automatic instruments are signals to the human spirit as well that a new era is at hand. It sent its familiar beep beep back to Earth. It was tracked by radio and by sight as it hurtled across the heavens. The satellite was launched as part of IGY, the International Geophysical Year a gigantic study of the Earth and its surroundings by 64 nations from both sides of the Iron Curtain in common effort to benefit mankind. In October 1957, the world entered the space age. At that time, a multi-stage rocket took off from a launching site in Russia. each rocket stage burned out, the next one fired. The last one launched the world's first artificial satellite called the Sputnik 1. The early satellites, both Russian and American, confirmed the work of scientists in many parts of the world. Those eerie signals from the Soviet satellites circling the Earth were man's first soundings in the boundless regions of outer space. Moscow announced to the world the first step into the space age. The satellite was launched to coincide with the birthday centenary of Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, the outstanding Soviet scientist seen in these old newsreel shots. Today, the scientist's home is a museum. A museum that houses a man's dreams and his blueprints of many years ago for the ultimate conquest of space. A reconstruction of the launching of the Soviet satellite with a tiny world situated in the nose of a multi-stage rocket. First, from ground level, the takeoff. Then, Mile after mile, the great climb was made, each stage of the rocket falling away to cut down the dead weight. Finally, at the plotted height, 560 miles above the Earth, the satellite breaks free to circle the Earth every 95 minutes, sending signals back as it speeds on. Around the world, scientists have plotted the course of the man-made moon, flashing round the Earth at five miles per second. In Britain, the satellite was tracked at the Radio Astronomical Research Station of Cambridge University, where the Russian professor Kapitsa, one of the brains behind the Red Moon, was once a research professor. When the tiny man-made world began girdling the Earth, the station quickly improvised apparatus to plot its course. And here it comes, approaching Cambridge at 18,000 miles an hour.
This is how the signals from the satellite were picked up on its first journey across Britain. Man had received his first message from outer space.